Salve te omnes. If you'd like to support the channel along with these patrons, I'd really appreciate the support. There's a link in the description box below. In this lesson, we're going to practice some more with some third declension nouns. Let's go through this lesson's story line by line. Aves walant et pisces natant. Aves in aere walant. Pisces in aqua natant. Birds fly and fish swim. Birds fly in the air. Fish swim in water. We have either already seen all these words before or can guess them. But the one word to pay special attention to is aere. This is the ablative form of aer, a third declension noun. It is regular in all but its nominative form, aer. But this is easy to remember since it's so close to its English equivalent, air. The story continues. Quomado aic avis dicitur? Quo modo, what mode, or in what way? And do you recognize dicitur? This is the passive form of dicit, which we went through in the last lesson. So altogether this means, in what way is this bird called? Or simply, what is this bird called? And from the word hike, we know that awis is what gender? Feminine. That's one big problem with third declension nouns, because although awis is feminine, piscis is masculine. There's really no way to tell them apart by their endings. And the answer to this question is aquila dicitur. It is called an eagle. Quills were probably made of eagle feathers, which is how you can remember this word. This bird name is important to know because it was the standard carried by Roman legions. Let's continue. Aves alas habent, ergo volare passant. Aves alis volant. Birds have wings, therefore they can fly. Birds fly with their wings. This is the first time we have seen the ablative form used on its own. It is more frequently used following a preposition, but it can also be used on its own with the meaning of by means of. I think this is also the first time we have seen a first declension noun in the plural ablative form. However, first and second declension nouns have the same ending, is. The next sentence contains the plural ablative form of a third declension noun. Pedibus ad scolum eo. I go to school by foot. So here again, the ablative form is used on its own to mean by means of. So this means by foot or on foot. Next we have Ali pisces alas habent, ali non alas habent. Here's the plural form of the word alias, which means other. So this sort of means others fish have wings, others don't have wings. But when ali is used in a pair like this, it functions more like some da 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 others. So it's some fish have wings. Others don't have wings. At this point, it shouldn't be surprising that alius must be declined to match the noun that follows. For example, alia tempora, ali mores. Other times, other customs, or other mores. Here, alia is the neutral plural form, and aliae would be the female plural version. Tempora should be pretty clear from its connection with tempo. It simply means a period of time. And we actually have this word mores in English. And miraculously, it has the same pronunciation and meaning as the Latin word. Here's another example. Alii homines natare passunt, alii non passunt. Homines 
Homines is another third declension noun, and it is which gender? Masculine. And the nominative form is homo. Let's play around a little more with third declension nouns. Try to say, the man looks at the fish. Homo piscum spectat. This is the regular conjugation for third declension nouns. So for the accusative case of first declension, we have am. For second declension, we have um. And for third declension, we have em. And remembering back to the form of homo we saw earlier, try to say, I see a man. Hominem video. The stem of this word is homin. It is only the nominative case that's irregular. This is common in third declension nouns, as we saw with aer. Try to guess the meaning of the following sentence. Canis amicus optimus hominis est. Dog is man's best friend. The is ending is the genitive or possessive form, which is apostrophe s yes in English. But notice that it matches the nominative form of some nouns like piscis and awis. Let's review the cases we've learned so far. Just note the patterns, don't try to memorize the chart. The key pattern to note is that the first declension is characterized by a ah sounds, the second declension by u and o sounds, and this declension by i and e sounds. This is most notable in the accusative case when we have am, um, and m. Okay, let's go through the story now in full. Aves volant et pisces natant. Aves in aere volant. Pisces in aqua natant. Comodo haec aves dicitur. Aquila dicitur. Aves alas habent, ergo volare possunt. Aves alis volant. Ali pisces alas habent, ali pisces non alas habent. Sed volare non possunt. Pisces in aqua vibunt. Ali homines natare possunt. Aleri non possunt. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And if you can, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Gratias!